And this GTV chart on the Bloomberg uh, showing how we have seen mega caps really uh, reacting to those rates, the 10 year yield being a directional driver for those uh, FANG stocks. What is your case for tech and rotating back into growth? So prior to about six weeks ago, we had seen tech really underperform the more value oriented sectors of the market. And it really made sense. I mean, you saw yields rising, but that was largely on the back of higher inflation expectations. And that really favored, you know, a rotation into the value sector. As we started to see yields level off and, and yields actually fall a little bit, and we started to see the U.S. reach peak inflation, We've now started to see the growth sectors of the economy like tech and biotech start to do well again. And I think that as we look forward into the second half of the year, given how oversold the tech sector was and given how on a valuation basis relative to value sector has, has really underperformed, we think that tech is ripe to buy. We're still, though, seeing inflationary risks, whether it's transitory or more permanent, right? So how do you position for that? Are there any real assets that you like? Absolutely. We do think that inflation is peaking, but it's going to remain high through year end. And, and certainly, you know, where we are going to end the year in terms of inflation is certainly higher than where we were back in 2021 or 2020 rather, or even 2019. And so what that means is you want to have inflation protection in your portfolio. We're in, moving into a mid-cycle environment. That environment tends to be very favorable for commodity sectors. So we like the hard commodities, like the materials and mining sector. We also like REITs, which is a real asset. And we think that given the underperformance that we saw in the REIT sector last year, uh, you know, on the back of the pandemic, we do think that people are going to start rotating back into real estate. You know, you've certainly seen it in the residential housing market, but we think through year end, you're going to see it in more of the commercial space as well. And so that's another real asset that we like owning. Erin, you also like uh, and say that there's undervaluation to be found in emerging market currencies. How does the Delta variant and potential new flare ups play into that? I think it's a little bit of sequencing. So I wouldn't put all of your eggs in the emerging market basket right now. I, I think you really have to wait to see us get past this peak in pandemic fears regarding the Delta variant in order to start to really materially rotate into emerging markets. Right now, we like buying emerging markets where we think they're going to have to tighten rates. And, you know, in fact, we've seen six emerging markets over the last several weeks, three last week alone, hike rates. And we think that there's more of that to come. And so that does favor emerging market currencies. Right now, we like Eastern Europe, um, which has better vaccine availability. But we do think you'll start to see emerging markets more broadly outperform as we move into the back half of the year. What do you like in the government bond space, particularly your views when it comes to the duration play? Right now, we you know we think that with duration is likely going to be range bound. You know, particularly if you look at U.S. duration, we think we're somewhere in the range of about one and a half to two percent. And so, you know, given where we are today in terms of ten-year yields. We, we prefer being a little bit underweight duration um, and we'll look to buy duration as we get closer to 2%. We do think that EM hard uh, duration is does offer some value, but you really have to be selective in terms of where you pick your spots. Um, so when looking across you know, the, the entire sort of category of asset allocation, duration right mm. now is one of the places that we're slightly underweight.